James here. Uh, apparently I've been doing my videos wrong. I'm supposed to beg that you like and subscribe at the beginning. Uh, I do appreciate any feedback. It does take some time to put these together. So, uh, you know, if I'm putting them out there and not getting any feedback, uh, I feel like I may have wasted my time. So if you like this, don't like it, just have, have any kind of opinion, please share. I, I do read all the feedback and try and reply if people have questions. Uh, what we've got here today is a front rack for the KBO Ranger. Uh, I've got a link in the description for the um, materials used and uh, the company itself that makes this. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this was because KBO offers a solution uh, that's a little you know, rich for my blood. Uh, it's $148 for a front basket and rack. Uh, and I thought, you know, maybe I could do something uh, that would do the job. I think it turned out pretty nice, uh, and I have my own style, obviously, with this. Uh, the one they offer is rated for 50 pounds, and I do show in here uh, me testing it. Uh, it, uh, it can handle 50 pounds, uh, no problem. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, show you the prototype. I'm not going to go into detail about cutting all the wood. Uh, and then at the end, I'll just go over, you know, what the finishing touches were. So uh, if you want to offer any feedback on this, please send it on in. Thanks. This is the prototype concept I've put together. Uh, it's based on the dimensions of the rack that KBO sells uh, for this bike. Uh, it's actually a little bit taller. Uh, the rack that they sell, or the front basket and rack combination, is 18 inches wide uh, by 12 inches deep. I've matched that here, it's approximate. And then uh, I believe it's like five inches or something to the top. This one, I've actually done eight inches from here to here. Uh, I've got three quarter inch round here and here for the supports. Uh, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to put half inch round around here for additional attachment points. Uh, the rack that they sell with the basket uh, is rated for 50 pounds. Right now I've got, uh, I believe it's one eighth inch corner braces. They're uh, zinc plated. Uh, so I'm going to test out whether this will support that much weight. Realistically, I don't ever see myself carrying 50 pounds in the front basket, but let's try it out. All right, I've recruited my faithful helper, Simone. You've seen from many other videos. Say hi to Simone. She's very excited, as you can see. All right, she's just going to hold the bike steady while I try and put some weight on here. I've got um, these, which are uh, 25 pounds each. This one, I just kept uh, the base is kind of stuck on there, but uh, I'm just keeping that to... Uh, Try not to mess up what I've made here. So we'll go ahead and put that. So that's 25 pounds, a little bit of flex. And then let's see, 50 pounds. And really, it, you know, it bounced a little bit when I got it on there, but it seems to be not bending. And so you can see at that weight, there is gonna be some flex but it seems to not actually push it down further. Uh, when I take this apart and show you how I made this, you'll see that part of the process is actually bending those corner braces so that they have more than a 90 degree angle on them uh, so that your basket is basically level when the bike is on the road. The components of this are pretty cheap and this is actually pretty easy to do. Right now it weighs about five pounds all put together. The majority of that weight is the board here. This, this is an edge glued pine board, very strong. It's a little over a half an inch thick. You could use like a half inch of plywood. It might be a little bit lighter. And then for the supports, these are uh, two by two by eights, very cheap wood. And so I just got one of those and cut it down. But you can see the original you know, size and you can see how I've cut it down here. 
and I'm just going to show you how to do that uh, without destroying your wood. After I'm done with this, I'm going to go and add a half inch bar across all of these as well, just for another support. You could do, you know, these are actually pretty light, but if you wanted to, you could do half inch. It's, it's really enough to support it. So I'll go ahead and take these off. And I've just got wing nuts on the bottom here. And these are six inch uh, corner braces. Now you can see that once I've assembled it and put it on the bike, I use my weight to bend this out a bit. Very conveniently, these holes on this lined up exactly as the front mounts on my bike, so I was pretty lucky with that. And I've just got some uh, quarter inch, one inch long bolts there. And then on the bottom, you'll see I've got four of these bolts. These are quarter inch, two and a half inch long. Uh, so they're going up to about there to support this. You definitely want to pre-drill the holes when you do that. Alright, so here's our board and I'm just going to weigh that and see how much of our total weight is that. Let's get a rough estimate. So that's uh, 2 pounds 12 ounces, so more than 2.5 pounds, more than half the weight right there. So you could use a lighter piece of wood if you, if you wanted to. These are very strong. I just had some left over uh, from another project. I believe they come in a 48 inch length. I'll put a link uh, to that. So. The hard part on this is you really need to do straight holes to line this up. Now, after I cut the holes in it, then I used the table saw and started shaving small pieces off to get to the uh, smaller width because this just looks very bulky. Uh, but you want to do that after you've made your holes or else your wood's probably going to split when you're doing it. To actually make these holes, you want to make them as straight as possible. The easiest way would be with the drill press. However, I've got this for making holes. This is three quarter inch. With my drill press, it won't fit with the wood and actually work. So what I did was pre-drilled a hole that size and then using the drill press and then went through and slowly used this, which will actually pull the wood out on each side going in rather than going straight through so you don't split the wood. Now, that's not going to come out as straight as a drill press, which can be a problem, but it's also, there is a little benefit from that because once I've put these on the board, the uh, stress from them being not exactly centered actually holds it in place very well. But what I'm going to do ultimately is just score some edges here and put a little bit of glue when I finally put this together. So those are all the pieces. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and you know add that half inch piece here on each of them and then I am going to go ahead and finish the wood, do some stuff. Uh, obviously it's very rough cut right now so I'm going to do some sanding. I'm going to route the edges on these so it's you know looks nice and then for this board i'm not certain right now i might put some sort of decorative trim on this and of course i'm going to paint all this so i'm going to show you what it looks like once i've done the finishing besides painting
and then what the final product winds up being. Here's what it looks like. We've got the bottom bar in here. I've routed the edges on the insides and then used a, just a sander uh, for the corner here. If I could, if I were to do it again, uh, I wouldn't actually route the edges because if you can see it here, I neglected to take into account the, the hole there and my router actually went in a little bit. I'm not gonna, I don't know if you can see that well, I'm not gonna redo that because perfect is the enemy of good. I'll know it's there, but probably no one else will notice. The next step is to paint this. What we're gonna do is a orange to match the bike on the bottom, orange on the crossbars, and then the supports we're gonna do in a black. For my particular bike, this Color Max by Krylon in the gloss pumpkin orange works really well, and then I've just got a gloss black to use as well for the supports. Now, painting is my least favorite thing. I'm not gonna videotape that, but I'm just not all that patient and good at it. But this is what our final product's gonna look like, and once we're all done, uh, we'll show some more shots of it. Okay, so this is the final product. Uh, you can see that I've finished it with the black paint here and the orange on the supports. Uh, I also added, you know, this trim board down here so stuff doesn't just fall out. Um, I wound up not needing to actually glue any of these. They're in there so tight that, uh, you know, they do not move. Uh, with the six inch corner braces that I used, I've noticed, you know, that, that flex on it may be a little much if you're doing, you know, off-roading. Um, I, I don't hesitate to go off the the uh, sidewalk or whatever go through trails uh, but you know it's pretty tame if you're doing more serious stuff you may want to go with the eight inch uh, corner braces uh, you will need to you know drill your own holes for that because they will not line up as perfectly as these six inch ones did uh, down here this these trim pieces i just cut them so that they're very tight in here and they're actually held in just by wood glue uh, on the sides and the bottom and then on the other side and I actually needed to use a rubber mallet to you know actually get it into place so they're they're not going anywhere uh, and of course I've moved the front light uh, here I'll show you how that's connected so I've taken that off here and there's just one uh, wood screw with a washer uh, you can see the attachments here uh, the wing nuts with the washer built in, holding it in place. I may want to do something to secure this cable a little bit more, maybe just a zip tie up here. Uh, up on top, you can see the bolts, and I may want to clean that up a little bit, just make it look a little nicer. Uh, the corner braces did take the paint really well. Uh, these are, you know, pretty rough. You know, I knew when I was doing it that I should probably just use some primer, uh, even though the spray paint I got is, you know, supposedly primer and paint in one. Uh, but uh, anyways, I, I will need to clean this up a little bit and just do some touch up. One thing you may be wondering if you've done the stop the flop uh, video that I have that keeps your wheel from, you know, going like this. Uh, when you put it up on the stand. I did have to make some changes there and you can see the springs here are still attached at the same point. But since the lights, you know, over here, you can't attach it to that. So what I did was use some zip ties up here and not actually on the, uh, the, the rack itself so that I can remove the rack without messing with this. Uh, it doesn't spring back as much uh, as it did previously because the springs are straight up rather than out this way. Uh, but it seems to be more than adequate to hold the tire in place. I did wind up deciding that the flex I was getting was a little too much. So I've switched out to 
eight inch corner braces here. They are uh, one quarter inch thick. I'll put up a picture, you can see the difference in thickness. And the flex I was getting is uh, all but gone. Now, you will need a uh, step bit or you know a good drill bit to cut a uh, hole in this so that you can mount it properly. Uh, however, it did present another issue with the six inch rackets, I was able to actually push down with my body weight to get this into the right angle. I was not able to do that with this and I don't, you know, there are methods I could use to try and get these brackets to bend, uh, but I don't want to weaken them for one thing and I don't want to apply heat while it's on the bike. Um, so I decided rather than angle the brackets, I would just angle the basket on the mount. And I'll show you a picture here. Uh, you can see I've just got a small piece of scrap wood uh, that is at the back. And then the uh, basket itself is angled. And that gives me the angle that I'm hoping for uh, when I'm on the road. Push this down. But um, you can see it's just not bouncing around like it was with the six inch brackets. And that's it. Thanks for any feedback. Uh, if you do try doing this, let me know. Let me, let me know how it turns out.